Good afternoon. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy for the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. You are kindly requested at this time to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. Conjugal love lived in fidelity to God's original plan is to be one of the principal manifestations of the kingdom proclaimed by Jesus. Through baptism into Christ, we join with him in having one and the same Father. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the souls of Michael and Francis Mergia. We begin our prayer by standing and joining in singing number 611, All Creatures of Our God and King. Number 611. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries we call to mind our sins, we ask the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The readings can be found at number 1171. Number 1171. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each one of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man, this one has been taken. That's why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. The antiphon to the psalm can be found at number 86. shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. May the the peace 
and the love of God live always in your heart. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. He, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he's not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they now are longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together no human being must separate. In the house of the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them. For the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the book of Genesis, we hear from the beginning of the second creation account. Did you know there were two creation accounts in the book of Genesis? These accounts are not intended to be scientific explanations of the origins of the universe. They are poetic expressions or poetic explanations which describe the who and the why of creation, not the what and how. The first creation account you may be familiar with, it's the seven days. And Jesus got on the first day, on the second day, on the third day, and on the seventh day he rested. The second creation account, which we heard the beginning of, is the story of Adam and Eve and then the serpent. Those two separate accounts, what are they trying to teach us? Well, first, in the first account, we hear that God created man in his image. Male and female, he created them. See, the first lesson is that every human life is created in the image and likeness of God. All of creation is good, but human beings were very good. All creation reflects its creator, but human beings image God in a unique way. The human being has an inherent dignity. Women reflect characteristics of God, and men reflect different characteristics of God. And together, they reflect the image of God. Yet we can go further. In the second creation account in Genesis, we hear a different statement. It is not good for the man to be alone. The first point is that human beings are created for community. We need each other. We are not meant to be alone. That is why one of the deepest fears in the human heart says, you're alone. If you were an enemy of God, how might you attack God? You would attack what is most precious to him. Attack the life of a human being. You would attempt to distort the image of God. You would introduce lies which make us doubt the goodness of God. And of course, the enemy would play into our fears by whispering the lie, you are all alone. Now in the second account, we see the creation of woman. Now be clear, this is not intended to be a literal interpretation. Men do not have one less rib, okay? I heard someone say that one time. Ancient rabbis would comment that the intention of the writer was to show that woman was created by God of the same substance as the man and from something close to his heart. See, in the, in the story, the man recognizes this other creature as his equal. A little biblical humor. The man says, whoa, man. Woman, okay, bad joke. <clears throat> the man recognizes this other creature as his equal. He sees in her someone he can relate to, someone he can share his life with. And not to get graphic, he also realizes that they were meant to fit together. We hear, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. God is establishing a covenant between the man and the woman. We are seeing the first marriage. And what is this one flesh union? It's not a trick question. According to God's plan, the one flesh union is the union between a man and a woman which can lead to the creation of a new human life, a child. A child is the one flesh union of its father and mother. This is and has been God's plan. And according to God's plan, a child is created or should be created in a committed, loving relationship, which we call marriage. Man and woman image God in their creative power to bring another human being, another human life, another image of God into this world. Yes, all animals can reproduce, but human beings are unique. While when they unite biologically, God creates a unique human soul at every conception. 
And this is God's original plan. Yet in the third chapter of Genesis, we see how the enemy of God, personified as a serpent, wishes to damage and destroy God's creation and distort God's plan. <clears throat> any attack on this new life, any attack on the relationship of marriage, is seen as a distortion of God's plan. To reverence and to respect the gift of human life is to cooperate in the mission of God. To attack, to damage, or to kill the precious gift of human life is a rejection of the mission of God. It is to play into the enemy's strategy. In the gospel, Jesus is being questioned by the Pharisees. They want him to go against Moses' teachings. So they ask him a very delicate question about divorce. And Jesus answers, Moses allowed divorce because of the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, it was not so. In other words, Jesus in his teaching, is pointing to God's original plan of marriage. The union of the man and the woman in marriage is intended to reflect the image of God, the relationship with God, a free, forever, faithful, and fruitful union. The permanent union of the man and the woman creates an environment where new life can begin and thrive. The union of man and woman in marriage is intended by God to be the first community to experience love, to support one another, and to create and form the next generation. To divorce is to separate this bond, and to enter into a covenant relationship with another is considered adultery. See, the word adultery in the Bible was often used to describe unfaithfulness to God's plan. So to break off a relationship which is intended by God to be permanent and then enter into another relationship was a distortion, was a misrepresentation of God's plan. Now let me be clear. This is not saying that a spouse who is experiencing physical or verbal abuse must stay in that relationship. While divorce is not part of God's plan, no person is a doormat for another person. And unfortunately, it may be necessary at one time for one party to leave the marriage for their safety or their sanity. I wanted to go through this, this history of Genesis because it really lays the foundation of our faith. And it's intended to show, lay out God's plan. And we see how the enemy of God longs to undermine his plan. And again, if you wanted to attack the image of God, to distort the image of God, to hurt God by hurting his most precious gift, human life, how would you attack it? You'd undermine marriage and attack innocent children. Throughout history, we have seen attempts to undermine marriage and attack innocent children. And I'm not going to go through a historical analysis, but one famous is the martyr St. Thomas More. He stood for the indissolubility of marriage against King Henry VIII. It led to a formation of a whole new religious community. Today, in our modern world, 41% of marriages end in divorce, 18.5 million children grow up without a father in their life, and regretfully, in 2023, there were over one million human lives killed through abortion. These are sad and scary statistics. Now, as you know, October in the United States is Respect Life Month. It's a time to pray, to reflect, and to mobilize to promote the dignity of every human life. Our bishop has written a letter, and um, uh, it's available if you wish to read that in the back of the church. But he talked from the, the U.S. bishops have affirmed that while it is important to address all the ways in which human life is threatened, abortion remains our preeminent priority as it directly attacks our most vulnerable brothers and sisters destroying more than a million lives each year in our country alone. Since science shows us, not religion, science shows us that a human life begins at the moment of conception, we have to understand that abortion is the leading cause of death in the history of the world, not cardiovascular disease. Elective and chemical abortion is the ending of a unique human life created in the image and likeness of God. 
It is a violation of the fifth commandment. And as a country, we are painfully divided over this most horrific crisis. Abortion is masked by placing it under the guise of women's health care or an inherent right. But even if it is legal in our country, no one has the right to take the life of an innocent human being at any stage. Many individuals, in my experience, who are vehemently angry about this topic have often suffered the pain of an abortion themselves. As Christians, we have to be sensitive and loving people. The pro-life movement sometimes gets falsely accused of only wanting to have babies but do nothing to support the life of the mother of a child. Because the mother and the child are both distinct human beings, we must love them both. Often, in my experience, women, a woman who is pregnant may feel alone, overwhelmed, under-supported, scared, fearful. And in that state of mind, it's possible to make a permanent decision which horrifically affects their lives. What can we do to support these women? Well, believe it or not, there are over 3,000 maternal health care centers in the United States who support pregnant mothers and women who have recently given birth. We support at this parish, Our Lady of Mercy, the K. Galgon Center located in uh, Bethlehem. We also support Catholic charities who provide value of support to moms and families. And today, just briefly after Mass, we're going to talk about a group that started at St. James called Walking with Moms. Who will sh this is local support for women in need. And there's a great website out there called standingwithyou.org. This will provide immediate support for any woman in need. The truth of the matter is, we're in a spiritual battle. Our modern culture, the culture of death, as Pope John Paul called it, can be hostile to human life. And we have to work on many fronts, from the care of the unborn, the newly born, the safety of young children, the immigrant, special needs children, the physically disabled, the mentally ill, the opioid addicted person, the elderly, and people suffering in hospice. We have the responsibility to love and to serve all the stages of life, from conception to natural death, but we do not have the right to take another innocent human life. Now, I want to say this very sensitively. There's a high probability, but statistically speaking, that within the sound of my voice, there may are people here who may have experienced the difficult and painful decision of abortion. If I can say this clearly, Jesus loves you. Jesus can bring the healing that you need in the deepest part of your heart. The sacrament of confession is the place where Jesus opens his arms to you and desires to forgive and embrace you. He loves you as one of his precious daughters or sons. Project Rachel is a great support group and another great resource is a website, hopeafterabortion.com. We are in a spiritual battle. There is good versus evil. And we have to ask ourselves this question. Do we protect and defend the dignity of every human life, regardless of its stages? Or do we participate in the enemy's plot to attack, wound, maim, and kill the image of God? During this respect life of October, let us pray for healing and a deeper love for every human life in all of its stages, and also that we realize that we have a responsibility to protect and to be a voice for the most vulnerable. I'm just going to close with a prayer, and there's a little card in the back of the church. It's available if you would like a copy of it. It's the prayer for life to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Jesus, you came that we might have life and have it in abundance. Together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you form us in our mother's wombs and call us to love you for all eternity. As your most precious gift of human life is attacked, draw us ever closer to your real presence in the Eucharist. Dispel the darkness of the culture of death, for you are the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. By the power of your Eucharistic presence, help us to defend the life of every human person at every stage. Transform our hearts to protect and cherish all whose lives are most vulnerable.
for you are God forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. <clears throat> Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one. Confident of our covenant with God and our unity with our brothers and sisters, we present these prayers before God's throne. That the church continue to guide and teach us in faith and be a living witness to the compassionate love of God. We pray to the Lord. For Catholics throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit help us bear witness to the truth that every life is worth living. We pray to the Lord. That leaders of nations may protect the rights of all in their care and lead all in the ways of peace. We pray to the Lord. That families will be filled with the graces that flow from marriage and parenthood and become true sanctuaries of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the gifts of nature, as expressed through the animals who serve our needs and the pets we enjoy, may lead us closer to the creator of all life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are suffering from natural disasters and all turmoil, that God will ease their pain, fill their hearts with hope, and bring the assistance to them that they need. We pray to the Lord. For the people of our parishes, that we may continue to create a community where people experience healing and joy that comes from a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. That those who suffer in body and spirit may experience the presence of our compassionate God in their moments of loneliness. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Michael and Francis Mergia, and are recently deceased, that may, they may be greeted by God's loving mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the intentions we hold close to our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord God of love, draw us always to you so that we may imitate your love and compassionate care for those in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As we offer our gifts to the Father, we join in singing number 828, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Number 828.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father,
Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anthony, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let, us off Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room. From us alone. As we come forward to receive Jesus, we join in singing number 588, I Have Loved You. Number 588. has broken like the first morning blackbird has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing pray for the Springing fresh from the world. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the Praise with elation, praise 
peace every morning, God's recreation of the new day. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the for them screaming fresh from the world Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just be asked you to be seated for a moment. I have our deacon to make a, a, break, a little presentation. Don't worry, it's not another homily. Good afternoon. As you know, I'm Deacon Jim. I would like to thank Father Keith for allowing me to talk today about a new ministry in our area called Walking with Moms in Need. In March of 2020, the church celebrated the 25th anniversary of the papal encyclical Evangelium Vitae, or the Gospel of Life. This anniversary provided a wonderful opportunity for the church to assess, expand, and communicate resources pregnant moms and families in need. The USCCB has invited parishes across the country through the, through the support of their bishops and pastors to join a nationwide initiative entitled, again, Walking with Moms in Need. Contrary to the false narrative, as Father Keith had mentioned, that those of us in pro-life ministries are only concerned with stopping abortions. The church actually has a very long history dating back to the very, very early church of helping unplanned children and most often children who are wanted, but their mothers feel that they do not have the means necessary to properly care for a child. Or, again, they feel that they are all alone. We want them to know that they are not alone. And that is where we come in. Walking with Moms in Need is here to offer, offer spiritual guidance, friendship, and the tangible support that a pregnant or parenting mom sometimes desperately needs. We will be there to offer support throughout the pregnancy and beyond. We offer groceries, mom mentoring, babysitting, rides to appointments, and so much more. We can also connect mothers to help with schooling, work, housing, and other public and private resources. This is an excellent opportunity for our church ministry to provide them with a life-changing experience. Our ultimate goal is to help these mothers become self-sufficient. However, we pledge to be with them for as long as they need us. We are only in the infant stages of our ministry, but have already helped a number of mothers with small children by providing clothing, diapers, toys, books, groceries, and other necessities. Pregnant and parenting moms in need are in our parishes and in our neighborhoods. As Pope Francis reminds us, our parishes need to be an island of mercy in the midst of the sea of indifference. Everyone in the parish community should know where to refer a pregnant mom in need. If you know of a mother or a future mother who could use our help, we can also be found in, on Facebook and other social media. We do have a website, 
and we'll be on the lookout very soon for billboards in the, uh, in the near future in your neighborhood. In honor of Respect Life Month, Walking with Moms in Need is sponsoring a holy hour at St. Jane's this coming Tuesday, October 8th, beginning at 7 p.m. at St. Jane's Church. Please consider joining us for a special evening of prayer. If you have any other questions, you can see me in the back of the church. Please keep walking with moms in need in your mind and in your prayers. Thank you. Please stand. Just want to check on everyone's how your rosary challenge is going. You all have at least five rosaries so far, if not more. All right, well, that means you have to do double up next week. Uh, if you haven't found, there is a little sheet of paper in the back of church. If you wish, you can write the number of rosaries you prayed for that week and bring it next week. Again, we're trying to have something that we can pray with both of our parish churches as well as the uh, English and Spanish communities as well that we can be united in prayer. Have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Sacred Heart Sidality will be selling Boskov's Friend Helping Friends coupons in the vestibule after Mass today. The $5 coupon is good in-store or online on October 22nd from 8 a.m. till 11 p.m. This is a one-day sale with the 25% shopping pass. Thank you for your support. The Archdiocese of Philadelphia is once again presenting the Catholic Women's Conference on Saturday, October 19th, 9 to 4, at the National Shrine of Our Lady of Chesticoa in Doylestown. It will be a wonderful day in a beautiful setting filled with talks, worship, and food. Please see the bulletin for registration information. Renewed in faith, we go forth singing number 835, They'll Know We're Christians. Number 835.